Dragons or the following installment of Raising Dragons. You yeah, haven't dying to say that! Woo! Woo! Okay, now get off the screen. Oh, Lola, what are you doing here? I'm the director. Whatever. <gasps> Lola, I don't want to get off the screen. Um, Oswald, what are you? Oh, Lola, Lola. I wrote a song about you, you know. Lola. Oswald, I don't need a Lola. Can I call you low? No! Oh. Hop on there. Okay. What? Uh. No. Oh. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Enjoy, folks. <laughs> I wonder how long I have to sit here with Adam. There's no telling what he's going to say to me. But Adam never spoke. Half an hour later... A middle-aged... Rough-looking man entered the room with Dr. Whittier. His slender frame reached about six five foot six, and his three-day beard and dirty jeans made him look like a homeless tramp. Bella caught a glimpse of a cigarette pack in his shirt pocket, and his blackened hands told of grimy labor in nearby coal mines. Billy tried to catch the, the pair as they left the office, but by the time he pressed his nose to the glass, they were gone. When he turned back around, he wrinkled his nose. What was that awful smell? It reminded him of the brewery just outside of town. Curious, Billy? Well, I... I saw you looking out the window. I... uh... I've never met Adam's brother before. I didn't mean to be nosy. I'll get you another towel if you need it. We haven't been able to contact your parents, so I'm afraid you're a sucker for a while. You did get your books, didn't you? Uh-huh. Then make yourself comfortable. I left a message on your answering machine. I'll let you know when your parents call back. I didn't notice that before. He must have a bad leg. Hmm. Uh, where are my textbooks? Uh, I guess Mom's on the office line. Maybe we're scheduling a flight for Dad so he can come to the go, can go to the festival. She's probably just letting them see him catch all our clothes. He finished his history reading assignment and then went on to the chapter questions. History had always been his favorite subject, so he was glad to pass the time by engrossing himself in the lesson. Unfortunately, the assignment wasn't long enough. After counting the ceiling tiles several times, he began, he started flipping his pen in the air. First a double flip, then a triple. A few minutes later, he had successfully performed a 12 rotation spin as well as an 11 and two tenths. Finally, after a few more spins, he flopped back in the seat. 
<sighs> Still waiting, Mr. Bannister? Oh, hi, Mr. Hamilton. I was just reading ahead. I'll be missing three days of school because you haven't heard. I heard. I'm going to see what I can do to sort that for you. Are you a friend of Mr. Locke? No way! I don't ever hang out with this crap. I'm glad to hear that. Well, I suspect Mr. Locke wouldn't care about his grades and keeping up with the rest of the class, but if that's too might. Would you like the lecture notes? I have them on my computer, and I can send them to you in an email post. Sir! I can't go home yet, though. Haven't they been able to reach your parents? Filling out a, d a definite hint of concern in Mr. Hamilton's tone. He had never seen a teacher with this kind of expression before. Was he worried about something? No. It's probably because my mo mom's trying to reschedule the charter flight for my dad's business, so she's too busy to answer the main phone line. He wants to come to the festival tomorrow night. I see. I have my planning period free and all of lunch. Would you like a ride home? Well... Okay. That would be great. Thanks. <sighs> I'll see if Dr. Woody will give his permission. Billy stuffed his books into his backpack while he waited. Mr. Hamilton returned a few minutes after. I pulled your address from your, from your file, Mr. Bannister, and I printed out a reference to him. Let's depart. Thanks for watching! Ugh, sorry, Lola. Ugh. Have we been stuck in there the whole episode? I don't know! So, Lola, same time next episode? No! Billy stuffed his books into his basket.